Hi everyone, this is James from the Control Listen podcast brought to you by Octopart. I am joined by my co-host Joseph Passmore and today we have a special guest for you. It is Christian Tiek from the Estonian company Efenko doing some really exciting stuff in the energy sector. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, James and Joseph for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Anytime. Uh, just for, for anyone who's never heard of your company, do you want to tell people sort of what you do, uh, what your role is at the company, uh, your CEO and founder, but uh, how has that journey been? And uh, yeah, just sort of general background stuff would be great. Yes. So the, uh, in general, what Fenko is and what it does, uh, actually the name says the story. Fenko comes from efficient energy conversion. So this is our center that we develop technologies, I would say, uh, in uh, as many technologies that help to convert energy more efficiently. This is what we do. And uh, yeah, with few words, we have been uh, uh, around almost uh, nine years already developing uh, quite extraordinary technology, which is um, much more efficient combustion uh, with the help of plasma assisted combustion and probably we'll talk about this later as well. And my role, yes, I've been since the beginning. We had uh, three founders, uh, myself and two, uh, let's say, uh, sci scientists uh, in general, and not particularly correct, but uh, uh, yeah, one is more scientific background, one more engineering background. And they, they had uh, their own uh, kind of research uh, resulted with a hypothesis that there is a possibility to convert energy much more efficiently. We have been in the journey to validate this hypothesis and uh, bring it to the market. Oh, it's exciting stuff. Really, really interesting. Um, what is exactly combustion energy generation and, and how, much of your, uh, how much of the world's current energy production does it actually account for? Uh, combustion energy, well, the, the numbers uh, in, in years can vary, but I, I guess in my mind, I have something 2022 figures. Uh, and from that, I know that 77% uh, of uh, world energy uh, consumption is based on combustion today. And uh, yeah, in that, in that uh, kind of pie, Solar is uh, roughly 5%, uh, hydropower 6%, uh, nuclear 4%, and there are other renewables and biofuels. So this is the combustion, like, is majority. This, this is the message at the moment. And uh, uh, yeah, that, it's a good question that uh, where are we going with the combustion? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't see it going away anytime soon. It's not going to overnight it's gonna be hard. to something else. It's going to be very hard and very painful to really avoid this or ignore this energy conversion. Mm -hmm. This is my opinion, at least. But has combustion uh, reached its limit? And what role does high energy ray ceramic play in pushing this boundary? Yes, uh, this... Uh, yeah, probably it's it's easier to explain uh, uh, this through what what we do. What is our product? Uh, you mentioned the, the, our product name, high energy array ceramic, which is basically uh, uh, let's say I I can show you how it looks like in in real life. Something like this uh, thing. It's just one prototype. It uh, uh, it can look like a bit different, but basically it's photon generator, which is uh, uh, in combustion context. If you can imagine big uh, gas, natural gas boiler, big round tube where is huge flame inside. So what our technology does, uh, those uh, we call them uh, Herc chips, they will be installed inside the combustion chamber walls so that they will be uh, fixed in the walls and uh, they take heat as their energy, energy source and they convert this heat into the radiation. More specifically, it's uh, 
let's say, in the range of uh, vacuum ultraviolet soft X-ray range radiation. Basically, we can simplify and say it's photons generator. It generates photons out of the heat. There is no wires, no moving parts. It's passive element that converts heat into the radiation. This is the innovation and patented, uh, our patented technology. And now those photons, what they do inside the combustion, they initiate plasma reactions. So basically, normal combustion happens in chemical reaction zone. There is bond breaking, bond making, uh, quite uh, well known processes happening, uh, and the limit is there quite clear. And coming back to the question, what is the, uh, has combustion reached its limit? Uh, our perspective at the moment is that uh, uh, that the limit for the chemical reaction combustion is clearly there. Uh, I mean, if you today go to the market and buy gas boiler, you would uh, see there is uh, efficiency, I don't know, 85 or 95 percent even. So that means uh, it operates almost in the limit of uh, of the chemical combustion uh, limit. And now when we talk about plasma assisted combustion, first I must say that uh, the science, uh, we, we have uh, talked uh, with a lot of scientists uh, here in Estonia, in England, in uh, Sweden, etc. Mm, uh, the science around plasma assisted combustion is relatively young and uh, the uh, there is no kind of uh, really clear scientifically proved uh, processes uh, and one of the reasons is that uh, they say that uh, uh, in plasma assisted combustion there happens around thousand reactions in the same time so simultaneously so to figure out what is the exact uh, reaction path and what reacts with what is really complicated task for scientists anyhow uh, we see and we have demonstrated that uh, with uh, with uh, the specifically the way we create plasma this chemical combustion limit can be uh, exceeded and uh, more specifically that what what we have uh, many times proved to ourselves and also demonstrated uh, that our combustion our plasma assisted combustion can save 20% of the energy, deliver the same amount of heat with 20% less fuel, basically. So I would say uh, combustion, as we know it, has reached its limit. But uh, I want to say that there is probably other ways to improve the reaction. So if you're increasing efficiency and reducing that waste, that must have an impact on sustainability. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. That's uh, that's one reason why we do it. Uh, that uh, we all know the sustainability race we all have. That at the end of the day, it's not a question about uh, uh, what fuel we, we use when we don't uh, have uh, anything to fuel. I mean, we have to think sustainably. That's our core belief, uh, and. Uh, and uh, what impact, uh, well, when we go the, here, kind of uh, philosophical, then the question is that uh, we started with, from the number 77% of energy conversion happens in combustion. And now we, when we make some thought experiment to think what we should have to replace all that with, uh, let's say, wind and solar, or maybe nuclear in some cases, uh, then, uh, then if we only focus to wind and solar, the amount of energy uh, that uh, we need to produce all the wind farms and solar parks uh, and the land we need for that, probably it's doable by the land if we talk about deserts. But uh, anyway, uh, and also right now we're focusing into industrial uh, heat specifically. Uh, and the infrastructure changes what is needed to, for example, deliver enough, uh, let's say, green electrons into the factory. We need uh, new grids, new uh, power uh, connection, connectors, and new infrastructure for the 
for the industry. So that uh, that is a question mark. Uh, what, what has to be faced? I would say that uh, to replace all that, uh, it's most probably needs a lot of energy. It's one we have to accelerate to use energy, and the other thing is of course resources. Many of those technologies need quite uh, scarce resources. So to is this scalable in that scale? We, we do believe that existing infrastructure can be uh, replaced with uh, minimum effort, with minimum uh, retrofitting effort to step uh, into the next uh, level of combustion. That's our, our way to, to think. What industries operate at over 300 degrees Celsius, meeting the requirements for your technology? Uh, no, actually, uh, they most of uh, let's say huge uh, let's say process heat industries uh, operating there. I would say eighty plus percent uh, operates there, and I mean their chemical industry, pulp and paper, ceramics, uh, food industry, basically you name it. Uh, what is the like? Normal case, use case is that uh, one or the other process in, on those industries need heat as a, let's say, to make some react, reactions happen in chemical industry or in bulb and paper, they boil this uh, wood uh, soup there. <laughs> so they need heat uh, and uh, they, they mostly operate over 300, uh, huge uh, industry. I'm, our based on our market research, it's seven thousand terawatt hours uh, uh, operates there. So this is our kind of total addressable market globally. What does the retrofitting process look like? You mentioned that just before, and you said it was quite easy. Uh, how exactly is that done? Uh, let's say based on our. Uh, face where we are and we we are i honestly can say that we are uh, relatively early stage but nevertheless we have reached to the uh, technology readiness where we where we did uh, industrial scalability demonstration meaning that we installed uh, 0.7 megawatt uh, industrial boiler with 100 uh, our chips and uh, validated uh, the effect uh, the same 20% was reached there. So this case study, based on this case study, we can say that uh, the retrofitting uh, took probably two hours. So technically what it is that we have prefabricated frame that this size of the combustion chamber, those chips are fixed uh, uh, there before we start to enter into the boiler. Uh, the boiler will be open. Uh, of course, the time-consuming part for industry is this uh, cooling down part. That if, it, if it's operational boiler, then you need to cool it down, and this is uh, this may be time time-consuming. But from our perspective, we see that uh, we uh, there is certain uh, uh, checking. Uh, time so we kind of fit there so it don't have to be extra time anyway it's a couple of hours it's easy in that sense what does the lab to industry journey look like for Finco? Uh the question is how deeply we dig in there it's it has been nine years uh, from lab to industry journey and there is many many aspects uh, well, uh, in one hand, I would describe it, uh, it's definitely challenging to develop totally new technology, which has, uh, probably it's worth to mention that uh, the technology itself to, to produce or to uh, make this chip, uh, there is uh, uh, so-called vacuum nan nanotechnology, which we have, uh, kind of apply, and uh, it is really precise uh, subatomic level uh, preciseness. What uh, what has to be apply kind of uh, applies. So it has been challenging uh, journey, of course. Uh, 
nevertheless we we have reached here where we right now actually if we say where where we are we are in the after this kind of uh, scalability validation we started uh, to uh, kind of product development journey to re replace materials that uh, should uh, withstand at least i would say three years is our uh, target time that the the lifetime of the product must be three years then it's a really good uh, uh, economy and uh, of course uh, this sustainability factor starts to work very well uh, and uh, we 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 have iterated with many prototypes and iterating testing changing materials and uh, yeah uh, it, challenging interesting uh, yeah thank, I, I must say that it is only possible here maybe it's, uh, to kind of jump into the context that uh, it was, would be impossible to do it uh, with normal commercial uh, based uh, innovation. So we have uh, luckily had uh, a chance to use, uh, let's say here in Estonia, local governmental innovation grants and European, uh, we actually won a year ago, the biggest, uh, biggest innovation grant uh, uh, to develop a sustainable technology. So this has been enabler to uh, to make that kind of technology development or innovation. Altium 365 lets you hold the fastest design reviews ever. Share your designs from anywhere and with anyone with a single click. It's easy. Leave a comment tagging your teammate and they'll instantly receive an email with a link to the design. Anyone you invite can open the design using a web browser. Using the browser interface, you're able to comment, mark up, cross probe, inspect, and more. Comments are attached directly to the project, making them viewable within Altium Designer, as well as through the browser interface. Give it a try and get started with Altium 365 today. What is the scalability of this type of product? Um, you mentioned industries, uh, are there different sizes of combustion engines? Uh, can you create larger scale ones, smaller scale ones? Uh, well, I must clarify, uh, at the moment, uh, we talk about combustion, uh, let's say boilers or uh, uh, gilnis or not engines. Engine is uh, basically, I must say that in theory, the, the technology what we develop can be applied uh, for any kind of uh, combustion and any kind of fuel. It doesn't matter is it gaseous, is it solid or liquid fuel. Uh, by principle, it uh, the kind of the radiation should initiate. Uh, there, there are it's it's not the same product, but uh, kind of fine tuning the. Uh, wavelength and some parameters uh, it can be adjusted to different fuels and technically also doesn't matter is it the engine which is in, uh, internal combustion engine or boiler which is just open flame but uh, e engineering wise uh, uh, at the moment ga gaseous fuel boiler which means open flame is the easiest and cleanest uh, for, like technologically cleanest environment where to apply. So uh, regarding uh, regarding scalability, uh, what I just told that uh, this scalability uh, test, what we did 0.7 megawatt uh, boiler showed that uh, there is certain scalability factor. The, the question is uh, how many chips per installed capacity of the boiler we need to uh, apply so it is scalable and from from the business perspective and also customer kind of return on investment perspective uh, the the most important factor is uh, usage meaning that uh, uh, what is the how much this boiler is used in year so is it like 75 percent of the total capacity is used so this is kind of average industrial usage. There, the numbers talk from that themselves, meaning that you the payback time is very fast because you 
like uh, running through huge amounts of fuels, that means that you save huge amount of money and fuel. Yeah, it is scalable. It, it's a question of uh, numbers and yeah, maybe with some technical remarks that uh, at the moment our ratio per installed capacity when uh, this, let's say, uh, uh, how many chips per one inst kilowatt installed capacity is 2.5 uh, chips per 10 kilowatt is the ratio. So you can calculate if it's a huge uh, boiler, then it's... Uh, hundreds or even thousands of chips uh, needed to be installed and uh, from their own. What are some of the international and political implications of this ability to, to generate more energy from less fuel, especially in regards to uh, global supply chain issues that we've seen in the last few years? Uh, if you refer to supply chain as a like uh, as a like gas supply shortages, uh, for example, in Europe uh, due to to uh, geopolitical situation, then uh, it certainly has its effect. Uh, at least for Europe, the kind of uh, need to to change is huge. So the need to replace uh, dependency on uh, natural gas is one uh, one probably driving factors for Europe. Uh, uh, and yes, I guess this has kind of pushed the boundaries and uh, politically also put many targets here in Europe. I, I don't see in the States or, or uh, UK, for example, such huge uh, changes due to supply chains, uh, chain problems, uh, like at least I'm not aware of. We did have um, some change, I believe, with uh, the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. There was a pivot away from uh, imported uh, like nat supplies because uh, we, we were buying, I think it was like, I might be wrong with the statistic, but it's something around 15% from from Russia. Yeah, okay. actually, that that's an uh, uh, interesting kind of coincidence that, uh, uh, that in Europe, uh, I guess I'm not uh, wrong if I say that uh, Europe, uh, the total budget, like let's say Russian, uh, gas for for was uh, twenty percent of the total gas we used, uh, uh, like uh, prior to the war, and uh, kind of uh, it, it fits the same percentage what we can save. And technically, if we could install the whole Europe with our technology, we can uh, uh, get rid of uh, unnecessary supplies. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. Um, we were going to ask about the supply chain, but I think we covered it in that one. So I'm going to ask if you have noticed any trends in the energy generation space in the last few years that you found exciting or interesting. I mean, the kind of race uh, towards clean energy uh, is huge. I, I see a, a number of interesting technology developments in the area of uh, uh, like uh, hydrogen, uh, actually, I didn't mention, uh, but it's worth to mention that uh, the, the technology, what I just explained to you in the context of uh, combustion, which is convert waste heat of the reaction into specific radiation. Uh, this is the core function of the, our uh, technology, the HERC chip can be applied in different applications. For example, we, we do work also with uh, electrolysis. Uh, it is uh, kind of, uh, uh, we, we commercially don't do, but we, we have been started the experiments to validate some hypothesis and technically there is also some, let's say, window of opportunity opening. But we'll see this a bit later. But nevertheless, about trends, uh, I see huge uh, efforts towards uh, 
yeah, be it electrolyzers or uh, uh, hydrogen based uh, energy conversion and storage solutions. And uh, I do, uh, I strongly believe, and actually in FNCO, in long run, our, what we see right now, how we think is that we need to have uh, fast uh, uh, kind of, uh, let's say, reduction of emissions uh, and uh, 77% discount for fossil fuels. We would focus first there, but in the same time, our kind of vision is in hydrogen and hydrogen combustion also, because uh, right now for industry to replace uh, fossil fuel for with hydrogen, there is kind of two problems. One is there is not yet uh, enough uh, green hydrogen with, uh, let's say, meaningful cost. Uh, and the other is there is no, at least uh, not in large scale commercially available uh, uh, hydrogen combustion kind of uh, boilers or uh, technologies. So I, I see that there are companies that developing hydrogen based combustion technologies and we see ourselves that, that we can, if we can reduce the need for hydrogen then the kind of cost uh, for kilowatt uh, produced energy will be also meaningful for the industries. So yes, uh, there are there are many many interesting technologies. Fascinating. Um, there's people out there I've seen and politicians. Some of them are saying it now as well that if we want to meet our green targets, our emission reduction targets by by the date that we want to, um, then nuclear will become necessary. Do you agree with that statement? Do you think it's doable without nuclear? It's kind of an emotional question that uh, somebody, uh, so, someone has emotion attached to that. Uh, I, I see that there are some smaller, uh, let's say, uh, small, smaller nuclear technologies, which, uh, which they say that they, it's more safe, etc. I'm not expert. I, I don't have technical opinion on that. Whether the kind of risks uh, uh, that kind of uh, have been the downside of nuclear has been really solved. Uh, so it's probably it will be there. Should we should we kind of uh, aggressively uh, switch there? I don't know. Uh, there are risks. Definitely, there are risks. It's it's a, probably country wise. Every country has uh, uh, the decision decision to make that uh, is it uh, okay or is it not too okay to take this risk on board. That's it. Now I imagine it's causing some tension in uh, the EU, considering some countries are very pro nuclear and some are very against it. Yeah, there is, there is uh, the, those uh, dialogues are quite. Uh, uh, Fueled, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I think that kind of brings us to the end of the uh, the questions. So I just had uh, one more for you. If people want to keep up to date with what your company is doing, um, look, have a look at your technology, that sort of thing, contact you. What, where are the best places to do all of that? Uh, I would say that first is our uh, web page, of course, uh, which is fnco. EU, uh, so efficient energy conversion is the uh, reminder and .eu. Uh, there is actually there is also you can sign up uh, uh, if you have. I mean, uh, yeah, uh, it's a good good thing you asked that we definitely are reaching out to say that when when there is uh, uh, smart people with. Uh, good uh, background in let's say vacuum nanoelectronics or or high heat uh, material technologies uh, from the scientific side so there is place to sign up to maybe maybe partner up uh, for developing faster so this is definitely the place to to go and maybe even more kind of up to date is our linkedin profile that we when we have some news we update there so you can follow the our linkedin profile as well great 
Well, thank you so much for coming on. It's been really fascinating talking to you. Actually, when the last question I wanted to uh, uh, add that uh, uh, we actually gonna start next fundraising at the end of this year. So if if some investors uh, or uh, excited people, we we haven't kind of defined the whole structure. Uh, will will there be also for smaller investors uh, some kind of uh, tool to join the journey? But nevertheless, uh, if you check the LinkedIn, you probably will will see. Oh, great. Yeah, that's exciting. Thank you so much. Yeah, You're welcome. Uh, well, thank you. Again, thank you. It, it's been fascinating. And uh, I'm sure people are going to think about combustion in a different way after listening to this. I hope so. The, maybe the kind of final word that we, I, I find this a bit, <laughs> bit uh, kind of unfortunate uh, fact that uh, a fossil is some kind of, uh, let's say, uh, become a kind of evil word that fossil is evil and if we just without emotion think what it is it is stored energy in natural way in our uh, earth so it's stored energy uh, it's nothing more and uh, now to make uh, the energy carrier which is gas or oil whatever guilty on the thing that we are not smart enough to use it smart way it's kind of wrong <laughs> so it's natural it's green it's uh, sustainable i mean the question is how smartly we can use it and we see that uh, there is ways to use it smartly so we don't uh, have unnecessary side effects so uh, what we have when we use it the uh, old way so the kind of mindset shift the fossil is not guilty guilty is the way we use it interesting perspective i haven't heard anyone phrase it that way it's uh, we, we hope that we we can uh, step through the journey faster to to deliver the product so it it, it is it takes time uh, all that kind of innovation uh, just we we want to make it as fast as possible yeah it's uh i guess it's one of those things where people are putting so much effort into moving away from it they're not looking at actually making it better yes most probably Okay. Well, uh, again, thanks for coming on and uh, really being fascinating talking. And uh, for anyone listening at home, tune in next week for another guest. If you are interested in checking out any other Fenco's links, we will have them in the video description. So make sure to check those out. Thank you. Come back next time. Mm-hmm.